Um, my name is Isigi, and uh, I would like us to proceed with today's lesson. Welcome to chapter four of foundation management and administration of ECD in Kenya. Uh, chapter four will be uh, on child care practices in the traditional uh, child care practices uh, in the traditional Africa. And uh, in the traditional uh, setup, sorry. And then we shall look at the we shall look at the definition of terms. Uh, setup, great. We shall look at the definition of terms. We shall look at roles of caregivers, both as family members and also uh, community members. And then we shall look at the child care practices in our communities. Uh, we shall look at two, which are naming and upbringing. That will be the end of the lesson. It is that short. And then we shall look at the summary of the lesson and uh, you go away with activity. So let's start. Uh, by looking at definition of terms. Kindly read um, all the definition of terms you are seeing. There are four of them. Uh, read them loudly, kindly. Okay. of 18 years. Child care, attention given to the child in order to facilitate his needs. Practices and activities done, engaged in, or performed habitually or regularly by people. Tradition, a long time believed by a certain group of people that is passed on to the generations. Thank you very much. So here you are told that a child is a person under the age of 18. Uh, that is according to, um, that is according to the law. And uh, as you will be proceeding, especially when you go to another unit, which is uh, child development, uh, you will learn that uh, we have different definitions of children. And in the African setup, a child is anybody who is uh, below your, your age. That's why a grandfather calls an elder parent like a uh, a child, or maybe you can see elderly people, they call people below their age like children. So they say, you child, kindly listen. So that one does not mean that uh, everyone who is called a child in Africa is below 18 years. But with this, uh, this is a legal definition that who is a child? A child is any person under the age of 18 years. Uh, when we look at the child care, these are the attentions attention given to the child in order to facilitate his needs. Uh, the child has several needs. Do you know the needs of a child? Maybe you can name two or three. The, the needs of a child, the clothing, food, education. Yes. Yes. So those are some of the needs of the child. So if you can pay attention and give these needs to this child, we will, we will say uh, you are practicing child care. So child care is the attention given to the child in order to facilitate his needs. Because they cannot work, they do not know where to get uh, resources to, 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 fa to facilitate themselves. So they depend on whoever uh, might uh, take care of them. And then practices or activities done or engaged in or performed habitually um, or regularly by people. So a practice is what you do regularly. You know, to practice means you are intentionally repeating it more than once, more than twice. It's like part of your uh, that's why we call it habitual. Habitually just means habit. In this case, uh, you might have uh, to note that there are activities either done or engaged 
or performed as a habit uh, by regularly uh, by uh, regularly by people regularly by people so um as you have something that you will practice that is your you will you will have as an habit your practice for example you wake up in the morning and you maybe you brush your teeth so that is a practice or before you sleep maybe you pray that is your practice or before you either uh, sit for your exams you revise so that is a practice so the activities that you do habitually habitually means in habit uh, that is uh, what we call practices now look at a tradition it's a long time belief by a certain group of people that is passed on to other generations uh, remember we have some of the beliefs for example uh, we can say uh, in Africa we believe when you are waking up maybe uh, very early and you go maybe to a place very early you are a lucky person maybe for example that's why they say the the bird catches the worm so you can uh, see the uh, shows you that uh, that is a belief so it's it's part of the tradition that's why in the rural areas people will wake up very early to go to the shambles very early to go and harvest because they believe when they wake up very early they can do the uh, better than when they wake up late uh we can talk about when we come back to child practice um a tradition for example if it is caring for our children this is this is a long time belief that uh, a community children or a family should care for the children or mothers are those ones close to children so we say that tradition by a certain group of people that is passed on uh, other generation okay uh to our next bit uh you can see uh roles of caregivers and we're going to start with families uh, kindly read there during traditional practices during tradition practices of the child care family members provide protection to the child guided and counseled guided and counseled the child provided food for the child educated the child health provided basic to the child boys are taught on how to behave and the clothes of the men in the family are thus are trained on how to perform the house chores by the mothers okay uh sorry for that okay. yes by the mothers again okay. provided medication and health care to the children provided clothes to the children yes according to the traditional practices um child care included uh protecting children maybe from bad weather you can put them in the house or you can use a uh, warm cloth or you can uh, in fact even they, when there was war children were not tampered with so it was a discipline that children should be protected and then uh, guide and counsel the child it was also a practice that uh, the family should guide family should counsel and uh, maybe they had their own orders uh, in, in, uh, over events uh, they could take supper and uh, wait until uh, they was going to bed then parents or uh, in the family we have elder brother so you can say extended family he answered these children then uh, provided food to the children those children cannot um, uh, cannot find food for themselves so our parents could uh, uh, could do this the traditional setup and uh, also educate the child hence providing food for the child uh if 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 the parent was maybe a handsmith i uh, would provide the same skills to the child maybe if they if 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 the parent was also a farmer or maybe some somebody like a trader they had a way they were passing uh their uh, skills to their children and that's why you found that uh, if if your father was a leader there is a, there are some skills you are being given and you will 
inherit uh, leadership because those skills were uh, informally uh, given to the children. Uh, you'll find like that's why in traditional African we say, you know, I'm doing what we do at our place. Yeah, I'm a teacher because my parents were teachers. <laughs> uh, maybe I'm a trader, our blood is full of trading. Or maybe I am a leader because with us we have several leaders. In, so it is believed so that uh, children were being uh, 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 helped to gain certain skills, especially uh, by their parents in the family. And then the boys were taught on how to behave and take roles of men in the family, while girls were trained to perform the house calls uh, by their mothers. You know, the first mothers were not uh, like nowadays, maybe we have gender equality and uh, maybe everyone is going to work. By then it was uh, children with, par with mothers and uh, fathers should go and look for what uh, to put on the table. So if that was happening, it means that uh, boys should be, should be taught on hunting, farming, uh, blacksmith, trading, those things that could help uh, them uh, to be like fathers as they grow up, like men, the roles of men. And then with, the, uh, with, the, with girls, they were taught on cooking, uh, cleaning, uh, maybe taking care of young ones, preparing uh, and serving food, and uh, even washing uh, children. So this one gave them uh, to grow as uh, uh, learn to be like women mothers. So, and then next thing that uh, provided medication and health care to their children. This is true when they felt sick, when they were not feeling well, it was the responsibility of a family to either look for traditional medication or maybe a medicine man or engage a help that will uh, try to solve uh, the uh, unhealthy status of the child. And then here, lastly, we are seeing that I provided clothes to their children. Yes, um, the family could, uh, if, even if they were using uh, skin, goat skin, or even if they were using maybe uh, some leaves, it was the responsibility of the family to ensure that every child uh, gets um, uh, clothing. Proceed, kindly read there from the line that says, however, However, during the day, the overall care for the ch children was as parents and their elders went for work. In the evening, boys and girls were separated. Boys went to the Rafamo. Is a form of passing on entire, you know, form of passing on pertaining on to a particular community from the fathers to boys, train girls on how to be mothers in the future. This mostly took place in the evening as they prepare. Yeah. Yeah, to go to bed. So thank you, although your network was a little bit uh, not clear, uh, but uh, the statement is self-explanatory that, uh, however, during the day, uh, the overall care for children were provided by grandparents uh, as parents and elderly siblings went to work. Uh, remember, elderly parents were remaining at home, so they were having a lot of time with those children and then their parents could actively uh, go and uh, look for uh, the way they uh, these children could uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, could uh, eat or maybe they could get uh, support uh, of their needs. Then in the evening, boys and girls were separated and uh, uh, went into their father's house for an informal skills uh, training. This was a form of passing on culture, uh, pertaining, um, passing on culture, uh, particularly um, uh, pertaining uh, the community 
from fathers to boys and even mothers uh, to girls. So this, they were being, uh, pre they, they were being prepared either to be fathers or mothers, and mostly uh, this could uh, uh, help them to learn from the workplace in the evening as they prepared, uh, took place in the evening as they prepared to go to bed. Okay, believing that uh, we can move on to the next, uh, uh, which is community. A community is a group of people. A community is a group of people uh, living uh, in a particular area within a geographical uh, share, uh, region sharing a certain resource. So if you are sharing a river, you are you are one community uh, in case you are you are you are in case you are sharing something like uh, okay in case you are sharing something like uh, uh, maybe a road you are a community if you're sharing a church you are a community so community, uh, this one uh, was actually um, a manner in, uh, who is, is a group of people that actually share a common resource. Yes. Common resource. Uh, I say members of the community took part in caring for the children. So as much as they were stay, they were in, they were different families, but they were caring. Uh, children as a community. The child was perceived to care uh, for the, was perceived to be cared by the community. This cleaning the child was a responsibility of the community. When you say community means everybody staying in that geographical area. This made children to be morally upright because everybody can punish you, anybody can punish you, including uh, your neighbor, the friends to your parent, even those people you don't know. So anybody can, 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 can get you in a problem or a challenge or maybe a mistake and then they punish you. And then provision of resources uh, to the children uh, was also perceived as a family affair. So it wasn't just like maybe you get, uh, uh, you get sick and then you wait for your parents like nowadays. Where is your mother? Where is your father? So they have to wait until they come from job is when they come and uh, take you to hospital. But by then, uh, if you are unwell, the community will take care of you. And then maybe your parents will get the story later. If maybe uh, you are hungry or maybe anything, you made a mistake, you needed uh, uh, to be punished. So all were taken as a community affair. Uh, next, we are going to child care practices in our community. And here we can see that uh, some of these practices include naming of the child and upbringing of the child. So there were two. When we look at the naming of the child as a practice, uh, is a practice of giving a child a name. The name assigned to different children dependent on, uh, on the community the child comes from. You know, they had their own pattern, they had their own understanding of how they should name their children. They also had their own um, reasons as to why they named children the way they named them. And that is why you are told that every name you hear has a meaning. So uh, with them, they could give uh, children names depending on the meaning uh, that they knew as a community. So that's why uh, that uh, most of the communities uh, named their children on the basis of seasons, you know, if it is raining, uh, some communities could name their children uh, in, uh, with relation to uh, showing that it is raining. If it could be sunshine, they could name their children like maybe it is sunshine. Or maybe according to heroes, that's why some children are given names according to maybe maybe Mumbi, you see, somebody called uh, maybe a rap. So that is, uh, they were being called according. Even nowadays, you hear somebody calling a child uh, like Obama, you see, this is something that they are 
naming according to the, uh, the heroes they know. Or heroines, heroines are female heroes. And then the dead and the ancestors. So some people are named according to the dead. You hear that, oh, your name is like the grandfather of the grand, grand, grandfather. So you are like, okay, I am, uh, you know, the dead is different from ancestors because the dead is somebody you know. Uh, let us name this child maybe like her auntie or his, 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 his what? His uncle or maybe his grandfather. We knew the grandfather, but with the ancestors, we are being told these stories that uh, of people we did not know. And then uh, our upbringing, uh, the role of our bringing children in the traditional setup was viewed as mother's role. So it was none of father's responsibility uh, in the traditional uh, setup. And uh, however, the boys got some skills from their fathers while girls were taught by their mothers. Um, uh, uh, children were taught sharing of roles and responsibility in early years uh, to help them uh, to be responsible when uh, they grow up. So maybe if uh, the child is a boy, they could be taught, uh, taught the roles and responsibilities of fathers. If the child is a girl, they could be taught uh, responsibilities of mothers. So they grew up having a responsible mindset because they have been taught, they have been exposed, they have been given uh, all they could need uh, in, in this uh, uh, in, uh, in the setup, in the traditional setup. Then lastly here we say education provide, uh, provided was not formal and they learned through apprenticeship. You know, apprenticeship means, do you know the meaning of the word apprenticeship? Appreci apprenticeship means learning by seeing, or you can say learning through observation. Because if you see, you say learning by seeing, it means you're only saying uh, by eyes, because eyes can see. But when you say observation means uh, you can learn through your all, all your senses. Uh, we, we apparently human beings have five senses. So when you learn through observation, that is what we say. Uh, uh, you, 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 you are, it is apprenticeship. For example, if you are a, you, you, your parent is a farmer, you will learn to farm because you will see the way they are tilting the land. They are tilling the land, and you can actually um, uh, see by your eyes. If you are cooking or you are learning to cook, you are a girl you will learn by smelling the kind of uh, the way uh, the f uh, good food should be, or maybe the way onions, uh, maybe the way uh, maybe certain uh, input into whatever you are cooking, the way they smell. So you can easily tell even if you have closed your eyes, you're not seeing, but you can smell that this one is whichever food. So observation is actually beyond just seeing. Observation is the use of all the common five senses. Uh, like we have some people, they can tell you, oh, it will rain today. You ask them, how are you feeling the way it will rain? They tell you, I can feel in my skin or I can, I can smell the way the soil is smelling. You know, some people, they have that so strong observation uh, uh, genius way they get uh, to know what might come. And, they, and by the way, if you, because the soil is smelling differently, and they have said that in the, in the evening, you will see the rain uh, doing what? Uh, falling. So that's why, that is what we call apprenticeship. You are able to learn by seeing what other people are doing or by observing what other people are doing. So we are saying that education was provided in, uh, was not formal, that was provided was not formal, and they learned through apprenticeship and other informal means like observation. Okay, that is the end of the lesson and I uh, would like to pass through the summary. I uh, believe you can be able to see the summary. Kindly read uh, through the summary uh, from the beginning to D, the last one. I cannot see it. You're not seeing it, so let me read it. Uh, 
Uh, what we have learned today is that African child care practices are, com uh, are community norms that relate to the way uh, people uh, brought up their children. Then um, we have learned about the family, uh, and we said that family members and the community were the caregivers in the traditional setup. We also say that the family and the community were bestowed uh, with the responsibility of the following. Number one, they were being uh, given the responsibility to protect the child. We have also said they, they acted as guiders and counselors. Uh, they also educated and impacted life skills to their children. And lastly, we have said for naming and upbringing of some of the, were some of the traditional uh, child practices. We realized that all of these uh, were uh, the roles of both the, 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 the family and the community towards a child. Reaching there, we have finished our today's lesson. Uh, maybe what I'll tell you to extendedly go and do is uh, number one, you have to describe how child naming is done in your community. So I'll send it as a question. Uh, you can describe how it is done in your community. You know your community, you know the way they name children. So you can try to find out on that. Uh, if next comes about it, you relate with what you know in the community. Then uh, the second one, what roles are played by the community in child rearing? So which roles, which roles uh, does your community uh, play in child rearing? And then lastly, uh, also attempt on highlighting three roles family members play in child uh, rearing. So we have learned all of them. Unless you have a question, I would give you this time to ask one or two questions uh, before we say bye bye for today until we meet on Friday. Any question up to there? Have a question. Have a question. Thank you very much for participating. Okay. Oh, you have a question? You have uh, a question? Only that I need this upbringing. Yes. I, I did not understand it very Okay. Um, the lesson was recorded, so I'm sure when I sent the, the lesson, I have explained. I saw you were having maybe challenges with network, so I explained it uh, very well. And um, you will find it there. So the sake of, uh, because we still have a little time, we say that upbringing is, part, is, is, is one of the child practices in our community. Upbringing means uh, um, uh, to help this child to grow holistically. You know, when we say holistically, it means we are able to support this child uh, with good morals, we are able to support this child with guiding and counseling. We are able to give uh, knowledge. We can teach education, even if it's formal or informal. Uh, and, uh, in, and we are also able to pass uh, from one generation to another one, uh, our own culture. So that is what it brings, it calls upbringing. As the child is growing up, the community and the family were give, taking attention, were giving uh, their all into helping the child uh, grow. So that's why we said the role of upbringing a child in the traditional setup was viewed as a mother's role. Remember, a mother is very close to a child. A mother is the one being uh, with the child mostly in the early years and even also throughout uh, childhood of anybody. So however, boys took uh, some skills from their fathers, uh, where while girls are taught, um, uh, were taught by their mothers. So as much as it was the responsibility of a mother to feed the child, because we have said that bringing is all those um, 
uh, refers to all those supportive uh, activities that uh, help the child uh, grow as a whole, like have wholesome uh, growth and development. But uh, with the boys, they were getting the skills from the fathers as they grew up. And then mothers uh, uh, were giving this, uh, the attention to girls as they were growing up. So children were taught sharing of roles and responsibilities in early years to help them to be responsible when they grow up. So they were not just like we can say, uh, like nowadays, nowadays parents are very busy, they go to work, they come very late, children are, do not have their grandfathers because their grandfathers maybe their grandparents are in the rural areas. So with them, they are here in town, they go to daycare. So you see, they have nothing they are learning. They are learning from other children in the daycare, which is very different from the early uh, traditional African days where uh, children could learn from mature grandparents. And that one is what differentiates the way life, uh, the way children in the current uh, uh, Kenya or traditional African uh, looks uh, different from those ones in the uh, original uh, practice in the traditional African setup. Because by then, even the, when their parents were going uh, to the field, you see, uh, to work or to, to, to maybe they were going uh, during the day to do some work. Uh, the, the, the parents left children with their grandparents. You get that? So that one was a very big plus compared to what uh, is being done now. So that's why we say education provided was not formal and they learned through apprenticeship. And that is what I was saying that apprenticeship, it means it is an informal uh, a manner of learning uh, through observation. So thinking that uh, uh, that was enough for today, maybe I explained it and I have repeated it. You shall see it in the, in the lesson. It's recorded on our YouTube channel. And then um, you shall get the idea clear. Till I would like to ask you if you have another question, I can still repeat. Do you have any other question? Hello, I'm not hearing you. Okay. Hello, are you able to hear me? The question is, uh, do you have any other question today? Okay, thank you very much. In case uh, of anything, you, can, you shall contact through our other WhatsApp. By now, I'll say bye-bye, have a good evening, and let's meet, um, let us meet uh, on Friday.